everybody. Good evening. Uh, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, this is our 75th show, and it's just been an extraordinary experience for us all involved. And I just feel so honored to be here again, to be here with the guests that we have been coming on show after show, week after week. And tonight's guest is is on for the fifth time on Bridging Heaven and Earth, and, and we've gone with her through her magical journey, her magical journey of, of passion, her magical journey of love, her magical journey of inspiration. Uh, Claire Hartsong is a healer, she's an author, she's a teacher, and more important, she's a human being whose hunger and love is the is the motivating force in her life, the hunger and love to know truth, to know God, to know true love, to, to know that transcendental experience and to share that with others. She's taken us on her journey, on her magical journey, through her experiences with Saint Germain, her experience with the Hathors, and now she's coming to us in the process of writing a, an incredibly powerful and insightful book about Anna of Carmel, who is the mother of Mother Mary, or in essence, the grandmother of Jesus. So, I mean, the insights that in which she's spent today with me and the insights that she's bringing about that experience, about that love, about that time, about the Christ experience, what that means to all of us, what we can have with that, outside or beyond, or, or to take us to the next level where religions brought us somewhere, where experiences brought us somewhere, where gurus brought us somewhere, where tools brought us somewhere. But now is the time for us to know what Jesus experienced, for us to experience what Jesus experienced, which in essence was the same that a Buddha experienced, what a Krishna experienced. And now is the time for us, coming into the new millennium, coming into the new truth, now is the time for us. And Claire and her magic is going to take us on a journey with her uh, that really, if you sit with us for the next 58 or so minutes, I think you'll be transported into an experience and a time of, of great insight and great love. So I'm just really excited to, to be here again with Claire, and I know you will too if you just, just settle in. So now, as we normally do at this time, we have a short meditation. If you know a meditation technique, do it for, for a bit, and if not, just try to follow your breath, or just try to well, it's hard to clear your mind if you don't have a technique, but just try to follow your breath for just a little while and then let just settle into your heart. So please join me. Thank you. So, so let's begin the magical journey with Claire doing an improvisational toning, an invocation, just an opening, just a, a, an extension of the meditation we've all been doing. So whenever we're ready, Claire, please.
Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was beautiful. Wow. So uh, we've been getting a lot of uh, requests, uh, both from the crew of the show, the, the Bridging Heaven and Earth crew, and also a lot of people, both guests and uh, people who watch the show. And as most of you know, we do this show live. And so when you're seeing it, it is being broadcast live in our local area, Santa Barbara. Then we make tapes and send them to the rest of the country. But what people have been suggesting to us is that we start filming in the field, like we have been requested by Kevin Ryerson, he leads tours of sacred sites, to go with him to some of the sacred sites and uh, film it and then show it on the show. And, and we've been really talking about that. And the director, uh, Jeff Azevedo, has uh, just got himself a new uh, digital video camera. I got one too, so now we have two that we can use for uh, two camera shoots and things like that. And so we're looking forward to doing that. One of the first projects we had, Jeff also has a, a non-linear editing system, which is like the new type of editing system. It's kind of, they call it a baby avid system. So what we've been thinking of doing is taking it out in the field. And one of the first things we did uh, to just experiment with it, we went to, if you've watched the last few shows, there's a, a local hotel in Santa Barbara, the Montecito Del Mar Hotel, who graciously have made their rooms available to our out-of-town guests for Kevin and and Anne Marie and Rich and Marilyn and then for the coming up show for uh, for Mary Barton and Stephanie Ben who are coming up and going to do uh, uh, one of them is going to play the uh, harp and one of them is going to play the uh, violin on the next show coming up so we went out there and just to play around with the two cameras and to play around with Jeff's video equipment, we put together this little video and we just, it's our first experiment in field work, so we just wanted to show it to you. So I guess uh, whenever it's ready in the control room, just take a look at it and, you know, hopefully we'll be doing a lot more. We'll be going to sacred sites, we'll be going to Sedona, we'll be going uh, to different places with different people. So we're really excited about that and this was our first shot at it at the, uh, Montecito Del Mar Hotel. So just take a look and see what you think. As you can see, that was our first experiment. We, we shot it there with these new digital cameras, and and the person, the female, you saw the male, obviously. <laughs> if you didn't guess that was me, then you probably should be looking for something else. But uh, the female was Shelly. She's the floor director. She does the lighting, and she's angling to be the co-host, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. So. And also, uh, so we're looking forward to doing more of that. And if you think we should, you know, call us, email us as you've been doing, and it really encourages us and lets us know, you know, what you're thinking, what, what you would like to see Bridging Heaven and Earth do to bring that inspiration more to, to you. So uh, now what we'd like to show, we have gotten a lot of requests for this, it's called Flower Magic Video, and it's done by David and the Light Party uh, in, uh, uh, in San Francisco and the, uh, what is it called, the Dancing Wave Music. So this is a, a, a requested video, just watch it, it's very beautiful and when we come back we'll be talking to Claire about St. Germain, Anna, and it just could be extraordinary, so please.
everybody. Welcome. Uh, so I'm on the set with Claire. Claire, welcome again. Thank you, Alan. So why don't you take us, I mentioned in the opening, you know, the journey you've taken all the Bridging Heaven and Earth people with uh, through St. Germain, not, you know, not to be done, but the process of St. Germain and the Hathors and now Anna. So why don't you take us through that a little bit? All right. You know, it really is wonderful to be back again. And uh, it really has been an extraordinary, magical ride and journey into more and more and more realization of who I am and who we all are within the oneness. And um, Saint Germain, of course, always continues to be present and, and uh, a, a wonderful traveling companion and buddy. And I continue and will always desire to have a greater awareness of his presence. He's facilitating much of the awakening process with humanity at this time as he is overseeing the incoming, uh, as we call it, the New Age. And uh, actually, St. Germain fits in very closely with the Hathors and also Anna of Mount Carmel. In the understanding of previous incarnations, St. Germain's soul incarnated as Joseph, who was the earthly father of Jesus. And uh, so he's actually part of the family. And uh, the Hathors <laughs> and, uh, and the Hathors have been uh, hanging around uh, uh, facilitating uh, our planet's evolution for over 850,000 years, a long, long time, many cycles, many rises of civilization, and they're best known in their and as far as the earth records are concerned, in the time of Egypt. And uh, Hathor, the goddess who represents love, beauty, fertility, uh, and certain resurrection principles. And Anna uh, was a Hathor priestess, as well as an Essene high priestess. And the Hathors facilitated the actual genetic coding of the Holy Family. So it, it all uh, weaves um, the fabric of the story that Anna is bringing through at this time. Now, now how did this first start coming to you? And, and describe, I mean, I, of course, in my inimitable style, <laughs> the grandmother of Jesus who makes it simple yes. for people like me, but why don't you go into how it first came to you and what your understanding of exactly. Anna's immortality and... Right. Well, um, the title of this book um, will most likely be Anna of Mount Carmel, the grandmother of Jesus. I wasn't and, so far uh, off. <laughs> <laughs> Which is surprising in itself. <laughs> Must be no. a magical show. <laughs> full of magic. We're all full of magic. Right. And we're all a part of the story. It's a story that really has relevancy for our time. And it is bridging a very key, pivotal uh, time 2,000 years ago, which I'm beginning to understand more and more from Anna is a rehearsal for what we're doing right here, right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're showing a picture now that you brought with you of Anna, yes. um, Mother Mary, and the baby Jesus. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So Anna is the figure at the um, top of the painting by Leonardo da Vinci, and Mariana in her lap holding uh, Jesus. And you'll hear me use the name Yeshua, which is the Aramaic Hebrew name that Yeshua or Jesus was known as, uh, the Jesus stemming from the Greek. So... Um, yes, you were saying about Anna, how Anna, you yes. know, the Greek So I first became aware of Anna a little over 10 years ago, actually through an experience with Saint Germain, who who told me that my soul had had an experience of being Yeshua's teacher who prepared him for the sepulcher for resurrection. And, um, and this began an inquiry through meditation. And I began to realize that I had a very profound 
connection with Anna, his grandmother, who indeed was his teacher and helped him prepare for his mission. And she helped set the stage really for the whole Christ drama at that time. And she's here again to facilitate the birthing of the Christ and the Christing of our planet and the Christing of humanity. And we're going to explore together a little more what that means. Mm -hmm. So, and she was, besides being in a sense immortal, and I think you said she lived to over 800 years, yes. is the way the stories have it and the way the yes. information you've been given, right? Yes. And, and she was the teacher in some of the, the mystery schools, the Essene schools, and she actually was the teacher of both Mary and Jesus, right? That's correct. Yes. Um, Anna came into her um, experience of uh, being on the earth plane at the time of the Babylonian captivity. And uh, her life spanned uh, some extraordinary events that prepared for Yeshua's coming. And uh, she spent the first uh, portion of her life in Israel and she was born in a, a stable a situation in um, Bethlehem, uh, then went to Jerusalem. And from there she was recognized by certain magi or very wise masters who have been a part of the Brotherhood of Light all through the Earth's history. Uh, there's always been a remnant holding fast the principles of love and oneness and uh, so they recognized Anna and she was invited to go to the mystery school at Mount Carmel which is uh, north east of Jerusalem it overlooks the Mediterranean Sea and you've been given all this information just for people who not aren't familiar with the story as as a channeling as a knowing I mean yes. why don't you tell a little bit about the story about you know how you came to get this on paper and things like that because I think that's interesting to people I mean you're talking right. about it as if yes. it's, <laughs> it's there and in a sense she yes. was so yes. yeah well, yeah in a sense it really is a holographic experience of then being now that that in the oneness there truly is a, a weaving and a, um, a connectedness wherein we can experience aspects of ourself in what we would call past or future time as if it's occurring right here right now we can access those parts of ourselves and that's part of the expansion of consciousness and the Christing that is occurring for each who chooses to awaken at this time so a year ago a little over a year ago I knew it was time to actually begin the book process. I'd been aware of it for 10 years and had been resisting it. To tell on a story. To, ta to tell on a story mm -hmm. because there there were certain levels of preparation and initiations that I was required to go through so that I could be as clear an instrument for this information and also to clear some of my cellular memory because in the past there had been scenarios where I had gone through some very unpleasant persecution when I would share my understanding, the truth as I knew it, uh, even to the point where cellularly I was remembering my eyes being put out and I began to develop cataracts. So you almost had to overcome the fear of exactly. that. Exactly. Yes, yeah. and I'm still in the process of doing that. And over this past year, there's been so many experiences of merging with Anna and as though I'm looking through her eyes and through all of her senses having this experience that it's there I'm becoming more and more fearless so it's an awakening process back into love for myself as well right now part of it was the first time I mean you had all these doubts and all these fears let's say of proceeding in this path yes. knowing and unknowing unconscious yes. and conscious <laughs> and then all of a sudden tell the story about you starting to smell the burning exactly <laughs> and um, I don't have the the transmission with me right now so that's no, in, that's in divine <laughs> exactly. divine unfoldment right. here um, it was 
I was sitting down at the computer having the previous day received from the Councils of Light a specific attunement and alignment process and a prayer which I'd like to share with you which goes like this and I'll share this with our audience so that you can enter into this experience of Anna with me and it goes like this peace be still I am the only presence here I am the way the truth and the life by me the Father doeth the works in me and through me the mother expresses love unto all life in me are the resources powers dominions and words according to divine decree I now begin and thus it is so the next day I was sitting at the computer screen up like this and most of the time my eyes closed because my vision was dimming so much at that at that this time is before the cataract this is surgery. before the cataract surgeries and and it was this resistance was just really in tow I mean it was like I'm going to mess this up if anything can go wrong why me God you know all of, for 30 minutes you know da 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 and then all of a sudden it was you know I thought maybe something was burning in my my apartment or your head <laughs> yeah <laughs> Exactly. And and then all of a sudden I began to be aware of the of the the penetration and heat of the sun and my body sweating and the, the ashes and dust and, and the, the wind and I began to be aware of this scene. And then I began, the words began to, to come to through, be typed through. To be typed through. And as I was walking up, upon the burning hillsides of Galilee. So in other words, at that moment, by some magic, you were experiencing that which you were writing, that which exactly. you had become somehow one with yes. Anna. Yes, yes. Walking at that time, whatever time and yes. space we were at. And feeling her anxiety for the tremendous amount of change that would unfold having some precognition of the arduous journey that was ahead for every single one of the family members who had yet to be born including her grandson which was Jeshua Jesus yes right. yes and she had as I, I am becoming more and more aware through her telling of the story that the key characters who played in this drama were to most the most part initiates who were well trained and every single one and I'm going to say us because everyone who's feeling drawn to participate in this show tonight in some way or another is connected to the Christ energy is perhaps very intimately connected with the one that we call Jesus the Christ and um, and perhaps even walked with Yeshua 2000 years ago and this is a call to awaken and remember and heal certain misperceptions that occurred during that drama because we chose to be fully immersed in that human experience as well as to have many of the veils removed so that we could play our parts with Yeshua setting certain precedents of empowered flows of love that would have an impact on all of humanity at one of the darkest periods of Earth's history and, and why so and that's the reason you feel that Anna is telling the story now that that you know she was alive 840 years she died 18 million years ago and now is it for this show you know yes no I know. for one I reason know. for right. this for right. this right. right this moment so I mean I it's just it's it's time for that yes. it's time for the, the Christ energy or that energy of of unconditional love of yes. oneness of knowing the, yes. the true experience to yes. come forth on a, a vast scale exactly and uh, to facilitate the 
healing of certain misperceptions that Jesus left us and that we were abandoned. And there was a great deal of grief and uh, 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 it was a very difficult, that crucifixion scene was, um, was very challenging and there's many misunderstandings about exactly what Yeshua was experiencing and what it means to us today in our path as the awakening initiate going through the Christing process that Yeshua exemplified and that as he said all that you see me do you may do and more and to free the Jesus uh, experience from some of the fetters that have been placed upon it by the constructs of the mind and organizations, the church structures, although it has served, has also bound consciousness through fear. And it, now's the time to liberate uh, ourselves and those structures into greater and greater communion in Christed love. And, and your experience has been that, from the information you're getting, that, that there was a joy to Jesus that was, oh. has never been expressed in all, you know, it's like, oh, Christ, you know, <laughs> Christ is right, you know, it's like, but that, you know, his life was one of joy, and even yes. his surrender to that experience on the cross, yes. such as it was, was in joy at, for what his service was. It was an extraordinary experience for him to be in absolute oneness with the father mother source of his being and to be in oneness with all of life and as an as an initiate who prepared all his life for this experience he truly did not suffer he had he was vulnerable and and knew that every single player even those centurions who placed the nails into his hands and wrists and feet uh, played their or Judas, their, their, or, or Judas yeah, that yeah. all played their part very very well and he appreciated every single one of us for what we did and um, and demonstrated in this letting go of the self who has judged itself harshly has condemned itself to be punished and to suffer his demonstration was that life is eternal and that there is a, a, a requirement to let go of the self who perceives separation there's a dying to that to bring forth out of the tomb out of the Christed heart a the resurrected open heart. The, open the open heart of oneness the, the true Christ who is anointed in the light of union with source, with, with, with all that is. And so, I mean, I know you've w woven it or within it, as we say in <laughs> New York, the within process, but I know you've woven it through what everything you're saying, but uh -huh. I mean, so the relevancy for people now is just that it's time for us to, whatever separations we see, whatever uh -huh. concepts we have about religion or faith, is to have that experience of the open heart, of the yes. love. Yes, of, of experiencing that what Christ did in the very uh, flow of our lives now in our relationships we don't have to go to the mystery schools that Anna participated in or that Yeshua participated in at that time life right here right now on the planet is our great mystery school and to be in relationship to drive through, down the freeways to be queued up in the supermarket to be with um, bosses and, and and so on that may be very insensitive to us in the moment to be fully present in love uh, is is the great opportunity for mastery and when we open our heart and go through the uh, this process of letting go of all resentments all a sense of putting the responsibility for our truth for 
the unfoldment of our lives, the own, our own mastery on an external savior or on an external teacher or guru to show us the way, because in truth, no one can do it for us. We save ourselves when we come into an alignment as Yeshua came into alignment and um, allow that heart to break, the tombstone to roll away, and the risen Christ itself to emerge. And that Christ itself is in male, is in female, is in short, tall, <laughs> any color, any yes. religion. It's yes. just it's like and, a, a open beating heart of love. Yes, exactly. And it's not limited to human beings. It's, uh, it's happening in all of life here on this planet. In fact, the planet right now is going through her own Christing process as she resurrects a new body and is in more and more light, is uh, being embodied in her and through humanity. We are co-creators with the earth. We're co-creators with the masters who have already demonstrated this process. And, uh, and so here we are. You know, it's really no different than what occurred then, except that we're doing this in mass. And in a sense, it's, it's unprecedented. Uh, so, so would you say that, I mean, that in some way, not an expectation, but that if you're if this book, this information from Anna, could, could just open the heart and, and just take us one more step into inspiration, into love, into what you know we're talking about is the Christed experience, but it also could be talking about, in pure sense, the Buddhist experience. Oh, that, yes. You know, I mean, we're talking about we it in that way, and, but it's really just the experience of love, of God, exactly. of truth. It doesn't matter what label we put on it, what attachment we might have to some affinity or loyalty to a particular group, organization, all of that facilitates and it also limits because eventually we, we do this solo. We come to that place where we are in the wilderness by ourselves, that 40 days or what, whatever it takes to be still enough to meet all of the aspects of ourself that have held us in separation to embrace those parts and to awaken and remember. Each, each of us is here to do that, and we can. And Yeshua did not come to be worshipped. He did not come to create a church. He came as an example of one who had a great sense of humor, one who embodied joy. He embodied the full spectrum of human emotion. There were days when he woke up less than perfect. There were, he, there were some things that he did not want to do and he let people know that. And there were also virtually a consistent, congruent demonstration of one who loved with an extraordinary capacity. His eyes, as I have experienced, in, in Yeshua or Jesus coming to me in, in meditation, my experience with Saint Germain, who physically manifested to me in the, in the Tetons, is these ascended masters have these have extraordinary eyes that penetrate into the depths of one's soul. And Yeshua had these magnificent blue-gray eyes that spoke nothing but love. I love you love yourself come home know your innocence know how magnificent you are I love you rejoice all is well wow yeah so what else to yeah, say? Yes, well, it's been a shorter <laughs> show than usual, and I, of course, will make jokes for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> so, how do you see, I mean, like, you know, a lot of times, like, in this particular time in history, we talk about, like, the male energy, the female energy, and in the human body, we have male and female yes. human bodies, and they do different functions here on Earth in terms of procreation and all that, but that this, this energy of love is obviously transcendental, so that even in whatever the physical body we're 
carrying is that the balance between what we call the male and the physical will start to come into place. So that's another way that that these teachings or these this information will affect us. Yes, it, yes. There are a, a number of different topics that Anna is addressing, and, and certainly the bringing into the mystical marriage the opposite polarities and the understanding of the masculine and feminine uh, coming together in this mastery of, uh, t some call it tantric alchemy, uh, that is an area that she addresses very, very powerfully. And Yeshua was one who demonstrated this, as did Mary Magdalene, who was his soulmate. And they uh, uh, were very emphatic in uh, their demonstration of this. Mary Magdalene was a very outspoken woman, very powerful, one of the first of uh, the deacons of deaconesses, I suppose, of, of, of what was being organized by uh, the, the grouping of beings who were taking Yeshua's teachings out. And um, she saw no difference between herself and Yeshua except that her body was female and his right. was male, and that she embodied... And he also felt the Exactly. Same. He right. felt exactly the same, and he, at that time, really emphasized, as did Anna and many of the Essenes, who were a bit more of a free-thinking, open-minded group of, of the um, he Hebrew tradition, uh, uh, that the equality of women was very important uh, thing well, how to could be... it be otherwise? I mean, how can men, you know, I mean, or men and dolphins or women, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just our way of separating everything. I mean, God, God love us for it. I mean, but, yes. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just it's, that, it's that been an interesting experiment. Right. We've certainly experienced the pain and suffering of, as of a result of the that separation. and right. consequently the wisdom. Now, once we can embrace that and begin to recognize the divinity in all life, regardless of the disguises and the outer external appearances, you know, and... and Everywhere you look, God is before you. Yes. Everywhere you look, every, you're before you. Indeed, in this mirror, you are the living Christ, and you are the beloved. Exactly. And I love the God I am, that I am, that I am, in this exquisite dance of relationship. I mean, that was the idea in the first place. And we've made it into uh, an extraordinary adventure and journey. With, with, sadly enough, a lot of suffering with it, in a yes. sense, sadly enough. Yes, and that suffering now, through love, is being transmuted. Mm -hmm. And it's bringing great golden treasure into the heart of love, for having had that experience. So, if people are feeling that, yes, you know, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, I'm ready. Now... Are, are there like techniques and tools to open the heart? Are there, I mean, or is the information, I mean, you know, how, how do people have that experience? I mean, you know, you could tell your story, which you mm. have, and, and I, everybody's heard bits and pieces of mine. But, uh, I mean, how do people come into that? What would, you, I mean, what would you suggest? What would Anna suggest? What would Jeshua, Jeshua suggest? I mean, what, what would you suggest? Let's put it like that. <laughs> since you happen to be here with me in physical form. Well, I find that that prayer, be still, and that when I can be still and, uh, and, and just allow the external storms that may be raging around me to be however they are, and yet go into the still center of my heart, follow my breath and begin to allow a connection to occur with my God source and begin to have a sense of appreciation of whatever it is. It can be the simplest thing. Nature, flowers are one of the, the, the most immediate ways that I have of connecting back into love. Roses particularly carry the vibration of, of ascended love, of this higher vibration that's all-inclusive of, 
of everything. And it, it just, that calming, that serenity, and the strength that arises within that, then I do not feel lost and alone. Rather, I begin to feel an all oneness. And then experiences, whatever is appropriate, begin to unfold. It's not something that we have to effort at or go after. It's simply more of a, an ability to allow, to be vulnerable as Yeshua was on the cross to all of his experience and to honor and appreciate every part of it. It brought him closer and closer to his, um, as he called it, or as, as the church would call it, the Heavenly Father and the Heavenly Mother. And uh, so in this cross, and I'm wearing a cross here, which represents that capacity to remember the, the center point here where heaven and earth are bridged and meet in the heart and the external horizontal physical plane and in this instance the polarities that have expressed in duality of light and dark god and devil male and female uh, can begin to be met at, at a point at a point in the heart in the center and that's the journey the journey without end that has no beginning and no end actually Right, because it's, it's the vibration and behind everything. It ex is exactly whatever yes. God, what we call God, whatever yes. we call the creation, the creator. Yes, and then, and then from that point, we begin to circumscribe this cross of spirit and matter and polarity and into a totality. And we become aware that Yeshua represented the 13th at that center point and the 12 disciples who archetypally represented the um, the personal journey of every every human being we've we played all of the roles of the zodiac we've been represented each of the disciples and by the way there were 12 women as well as 12 men and, and there were 12 and, couples no, yes <laughs> that's true there no, were <laughs> and uh got to keep everyone happy <laughs> right so anyway we're bringing that round table that zodiac remembering that we're not just one sign that we're all of it and uh that is coming into a harmony that's all being honored even the judas aspect has its place to, to, to play itself out, sort of like the spice that makes an otherwise quite bland stew interesting. And um, everybody so wants to be betrayed <laughs> with a kiss. It's a real dream come true for you. <laughs> when you say, well, it facilitates an opportunity to, to for, surrender a guess. And indeed, to surrender something that is very uh, vital to be brought into an alignment. And what would you say that is? The separated self. So in, in essence, that would just be another thing that comes into one. Yes, as a vital ingredient, as a very important part. We cannot return home without our ego self, without a sense of I am-ness. And the, the contrasting I am not has simply, which Judas in, in the archetype represented the I am not, all of the I can'ts, the I won'ts, um, right. and the bitterness, the resentment, the blame, the guilt, all of the, all of the, the suffering aspect. Uh, that contrast has brought us into greater wisdom and uh, greater sense of truth, and therefore, if we allow a greater joy. Well, we've talked about this a lot over the last few days, almost a sense of compassion. Yes. Because we, we experience as we start to be separate from that which we are in a sense, you know, a consciousness is developing. 
we see all the different parts of ourselves oh. and in that we can have true compassion for the human condition and the human experience exactly. and, and all our brothers and sisters and in essence ourselves yes because there's no and difference the, and as i see buddha here he's so beautifully uh, uh, manifested a life of compassion and uh, and there are many wondrous beings who uh, demonstrate that and and we're here uh, walking in those same footsteps, fulfilling that same design. It's our destiny as well to awaken as compassionate masters. So, I guess we got some some real ex just incredible <laughs> journey ahead of us. We do, and Anna's journey as well over that 804 years, you know, including Egypt, Israel, and Britain is uh, there's a, a tall So you're just going through the whole tail. process. I mean, this could be like <laughs> one of those books that you have to pick up with a train. <laughs> well, it covers a lot of information, information. and actually there will be a series. There is a, there, that's there, your experience. Yes, there is a series and there will be workbooks that will be available for seminars and, and workshop experiences because there are individuals who are choosing to remember how to regenerate their bodies to live longer than the, the proverbial 72 years. Are we finished? I think now? we're done. Are we okay, done? so right. good night. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.